Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, we are going to be talking about, as George C. Scott portraying Patton said in the movie, well, Patton, Romans, the Carthaginians, because that's what we're doing. We're going to take a look at Hannibal and Hamilcar. Notice how big Hannibal is. Hannibal! And it's like, Hamilcar! You know, like an afterthought almost. Um, which, of course, is by Failing Schemes. It's a reworking of Mark Simonich's, and I hope I pronounced that right, classic game from way back when, um, in the mid-1990s. I want to say 95, 96, somewhere around there, maybe 97. Um, anyway. So, what I'm going to be focusing on here is going to be the Hamilcar part. Because while there are a lot of games that exist out there about Hannibal... There's not a whole lot about the First Punic War. And quite frankly, that's what drew me to um, to buying this version of the game, was because it did come with the First Punic War uh, involved in it. Okay, So, I'm going to show you a sample turn of that here today. Actually, the second turn, because the opening turn, there's not a whole lot of action. Um, and also in this video, I'm going to highlight how I have been doing um, my solo method excuse me, with the battle cards um, that are provided in the game. Years ago, somebody came up with a combat results table using a 20-sided die, which was in the file section of Board Game Geek under the original uh, Hannibal listing. But um, I kind of toured around with the battle cards, and I mean, nothing spectacular, but I think it works. I had a lot of fun with it last time when I played this, so um, we'll kind of take it from there. Now, before we get full-blown here into the first Punic War... Um, which, by the way, just for the record, I'll put out there, I actually find more interesting than Hannibal, um, simply because there was a lot more hanging in the balance. You know, uh, both sides were a little more evenly matched. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Hannibal is an incredible story. It's an incredible campaign to study and stuff. But um, but I, always, I, I find this one to be more interesting. I know I'm probably in the minority there, but um, yeah. So two things before we get going here is just to share, first of all, if you're really into the Punic Wars, um, as a good intro book, and I don't have my copy handy, there is the Punic Wars by Goldsworthy, which was a nice overview. But if you want serious detail on the first two Punic Wars, uh, these two books by J.F. Lazenby, The First Punic War, and then Hannibal's War, both, I believe, are available from University of Oklahoma. Yeah, right there. Press. Uh, they are terrific. So if you want some good reading on these, some nice meaty stuff to read in details, that is the way to go, is with the Lazenby books. Second thing I want to mention here real quick is uh, just a big thank you to everybody who watches recently in the last week or so. Uh, I crossed the threshold of 50,000 total views, which I got to tell you, when I started this channel, um, you know, about a year, what, about a year and three months ago, um, I did not think I would ever have that many views. Um, and also a big thanks to all my subscribers, which are now 605 of you. Um, yeah, I just really, you know, I'm humbled um, that uh, you all find this very useful slash interesting. Because um, I mentioned this before, I used to be a teacher by trade, and, you know, by doing these playthroughs, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm helping some folks out to see how games are played and, you know, help them make decisions and things like that so you can see what it's like in action. You know, to quote Schoolhouse Rock, I do my thing in action, burp. So, so big thank you. All right, now, let's get down to business. Now, as you can see here, I went whole hog on the Kickstarter campaign. I got the giant map, which, by the way, has been worth it. Um, I really like it a lot. And, I mean, I've had it rolled up in its tube, and I laid it out last night, and boom, it's flat. It's ready to roll. So, since it's ready to roll, let's get ready to roll. Okay. Now, I chose to start with turn two also because this is the first turn where you get reinforcements. You get no reinforcements on the first turn. You wouldn't get to see the procedure of how the leaders are chosen. As you can see here from the map, um, you know, I also did the, the miniatures and everything and stuff. So you can see there we've got our Carthaginians ready to fight. And of course, I'm focusing on Sicily because, as I used to tell my students, the first Punic War, all those years, from 264 to 241 BC, it was all about Sicily. That was the prize. So, um, you know, 
Yeah, of course, against Sardinia, we're kind of sideshow, to be honest. In my opinion, I mean, now others may have different opinions, but that's the way I always looked at it. Was Sicily was the prize. Um, so, all right. So let's get rolling here. So first thing we do with reinforcements, there are reinforcements that you get every single turn. So the Carthaginians, okay, I get to place one ready warship because, of course, the Carthaginians were the better naval force at this time. Okay, and warships go over here in this space. Oops, which is just a little bit off camera right now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Over here in this C space here. Now, warships can be both ready and basically spent, if you will. So, right now, Carthage has three ready warships, and they have one that is spent. And you can use your ops to bring them back to um, ready status. Okay? So, we'll talk more about warships when we have a little naval battle, because I think I've set this up where I can basically force a naval battle. All right, now I can place one combat unit with a general, uh, any unbesieged wall city that is controlled by the Carthaginians. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and since the main event is going to be down here, I'm going to place that one with the general that's there right now, which is Gisco. So he'll get that strength point there. All right, now... This is where this game is, is there's a couple things that make this game very different from Hannibal. Uh, one of them is the naval procedure. The naval procedure, because by the time of the Hannibalic War, Rome was dominating the Mediterranean. Here is very much up in the air. So, um, again, we'll go over that as we go through the play. But the other big thing is the Carthaginian Senate, if you will, the Council of 104, as it was known, is represented in the game by this little space here. Okay, And you put down control markers, just like you do in the regular uh, Hannibal game, and what it does for Carthage is it gets them two benefits. Number one, if they get control of it, a.k.a. they fill every space in, which right now you can see there's one space that is empty, then it counts as an extra province for control for victory purposes. The other thing is, let me see, let me just zoom in a little bit more on the one here. There we go. When you put control markers in two spaces like this, whatever's between that line you get that as extra. So for example here, this one here, there is an extra combat unit. So the Carthaginians will be getting one extra combat unit and they'll be getting an extra one from here too, as well. I think that one, yes, it did show up on the camera. Okay, and you can also get extra generals that way if you want. Now, of course, you don't have to, but you know, you can. And of course, that increases the probability that you end up with um, better generals with better um, movement and combat abilities. So that's kind of a little different there. Okay, so since I have that, I have two extra combat units and they are basically placed as normal reinforcements, which basically means those two, um, or I shouldn't say as normal reinforcements, I believe, yes, they're both going to be placed into Carthage. Yeah, okay. So, so the two extra units will go into Carthage and right now currently in Carthage, Hanno is the man there with his elephants among other things. Okay, now, the other thing is now leaders. Now, with Carthage, Carthage leadership, basically two things happen. Well, three things actually happen. One, you always get the leader who is named here. So we're gonna get a Hamilcar, no matter what, out of the leader cards that are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place them over here so we're ready. Now, if you look here at this blue sword, this is Xanthippus, the, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, the uh, Spartan mercenary general. Not much is known about him, as I recall. I mean, he just kind of pops up um, and helps Carthage out when Rome invaded Africa, and then he just as quickly disappears into history um, from that. If, again, this is all from memory from about a decade ago of reading. But if you want to, you can take the number of control markers equal to the sword here, which is five, and bring him into the game. Now, the benefit of that is it helps with the elephant thing because there is a, a negative modifier with elephants for the Carthaginians at the beginning of the game. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other thing is it will allow you to bring in your strongest Carthaginian general, Hamilcar Barca. Um, so if you take the chance, you risk it, uh, you can go ahead and bring him in. Now, going further down the track, as you can see there, there's more blue swords. And again, um, it's kind of a trade-off. Should you quickly try to do that? Should you bring Han Hamilcar in? Should you go ahead and hang out for a while? You know, it's kind of up to you as far as that goes. For the purposes of this, I'm going to leave him be because um, I think it's just a little bit too early to be doing that. Okay. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is 
Let's move back over here to center stage, as it were. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and let me put my combat markers back here on the map temporarily. Because basically, there's leader cards with this. So what you can do is, you can basically go ahead and stack your combat units with your leaders with the miniatures, which I do like. Okay, So Hannah will go back into the pool. He is possible to come back into the game this turn. And then we also have Gisco, who is in Sicily, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put those combat units there. Okay? All right. Now, now that I know Hamilcar is definitely going to be involved, I get one extra general every single turn for Carthage. And then because of, as I showed you a little bit ago, with the Carthaginian Council of 104, I get two extra generals on top of that, so I'm actually going to get four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six of them here. So I will get three more generals. And there's different ways you can do this. Um, they have the flat little counter markers. You can put them into a pool and draw them. Um, I just choose to assign everybody a number and roll three dice and see what we get. Okay, well, definitely general number four is coming into play. And number five. Okay, one. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's my four Carthaginian generals, which then I can go ahead and place them. Excuse me, I have a little trouble this morning. With any combat force that I want. Okay, so now I'm going to just take a look here. Let's take a look at who I've got. Here, I've got an interesting collection of characters. Trying to figure out. So there's going to be definitely be fighting in Sicily. So I want to definitely go with somebody who's got a pretty good rating for combat ability, but also can move around quite a bit. Now, when it comes to the cars, the blue one is your ac action um, ability, ba activation. So basically, he can be activated with a card that has a value of two or three and then there's your battle rating which is right here and that's a three which is huge for the number of battle cards you get so i'm going to put him in sicily at lily bomb and i might be mispronouncing these names so if i do just kind of bear with me so i'm going to go and get the guys from the almighty tray dun 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 there it is nice thing about this game too by the way is not only do you have the tray but on the back of the rule book so you know where everybody goes in and you can make it fit. There is a guide. Where, who goes where. As Eartha Kit would say, it's perfect. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to take Adderball, I believe is how you pronounce that. And I'm going to go ahead and take him. And I will place him in Sicily here. So he's going to move in, pick up these folks. And I'm going to put him there. Okay. Now, let's see. Of these guys, hmm, what should I do with these guys? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put I'm going to take Himlico and I'm going to put him in Sardinia. Now, the reason I'm going to put him in Sardinia is because he can then have the chance to try to intercept naval movements that the Romans might do if I move him into the center of the island over here. So I'll go ahead and do that with him. And then I'm going to take these two last guys that I have left and I'm going to put them together in Carthage. And I'm going to designate... Um, I'm going to make Carthello the leader because although he has a slightly lower battle rating, he has an easier activation number of two. And by the way, on the miniatures, I mean, you can basically, the poses match, so it's pretty easy. But you can also see, hopefully you can see, there's the numbers at the bottom too, if you're ever in doubt. Okay. So, we are off and running with Carthage. The Carthaginians are ready to roll for this turn. Okay, get everybody in place. And I'll put Hamilcar on Carthalo's um, card, too. And, of course, the different cards, they do have different abilities. 
special ability so you want to keep that in mind you can see here Hamilcar has a battle rating of two in naval battles because he has the admiral characteristic to him so okay now the Romans all right so now I can place combat units with are equal to the number of provinces that Rome controls in Italy. So let's get back into the main event here. All right. So Rome basically controls every but every place but Eteria. So one, two, three, four, five. Now two of those I can place with any commanding general. Okay. So I'm going to put two of them down here in Sicily because again. This is where the main event is going to be. You can expect some fighting this turn because it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. All right. So we'll be down there in Sicily with those two. And then the other three will go to Roma, which is where the rest of your reinforcements basically go. Now, I can also trade those reinforcements off as far as like with a warship and stuff goes too, but I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go ahead and, and do that. But you could do it um, on a one to one basis. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe I will. You know what? I will. Because Carthage does have a lot of warships. So let me get two more warships for Rome, and I'll place one more unit in Roma itself with the proconsul who's there for the time being. Okay. All right, so we got all the reinforcements down. Now, first thing you do as the Romans is you have to designate a proconsul. So one of the consuls who was a leader last turn, which you know anything about the Roman system, you know, that's basically how that rolls here. So let me put my combat units back on the map here. And my proconsul, of course, is he's done. Stick a fork in him. He's finished for the game. All right, so which one of these guys do I want to make my proconsul? Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the one in Rome because he um, he has the better movement rating and such. So I will go ahead and remove this guy down here. That's it, Masana, and I'll replace him with a new leader here in just a few moments. Okay. All right, so now he's out of the game. And now this other Roman leader can come into the game. I will say this from playing this game the last time around. Um, it was very tight. It was very fun. But a lot of it also seems to be very, I don't want to say dependent, but it is important what consoles the Romans get. So just kind of bear that in mind. So one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I need two. So again, I'm just going to roll a dice. You could use the flat counter if you want. I just prefer to do it this way. Okay. Well, that was easy enough. Number one and number two. <laughs> okay. So how did I make out? Well, well, just like the real Roman system, I kind of made out a mixture here. This guy, good battle rating, not so easy to activate. Get his dupa in gear. This guy, easy to move, but not quite so easy, or not a very good battle rating. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is this. I am going to put my big guy, my big dog, if you will, with his folded arms there. I am going to go ahead and put him down here at Masana, so he'll be ready to rock and roll. So if the Carthaginians come after him, he'll be ready. And then the other individual here, yeah, I haven't even attempted their names yet, so just kind of roll with me here. I'm going to go ahead and put him down here so that he, at um, Croton, so that he can go ahead and move troops into Sicily in the near future. Okay? All right. So, those are my new consuls here. All right? Now, all right, so I've got my consoles. Um, now, 
Some of the consuls have the word admiral on the card, and when they do, they can do naval reforms. Because again, at this point, Rome was not very good when it came to naval warfare. Um, really, until they got that captured Quinrim, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, they really didn't do a very good job at all. So, um, after that, they studied it, basically tore it apart, if you will, so to speak, and figured out how to make it work. And then, of course, the Corvus um, was a big thing, too, the, the crow, but... Um, that comes in as a, a card in the events, so or can be played as a card, as an event to bring that into play. Okay, but what I can do with my admiral thing here is I can either improve seamanship, mount or dismount the corvi, add one warship as a reinforcement, or I can spend three ops to refit. Now, what I'm going to do, let me show you over here. This again is different from the Hannibal game. Rome has a seamanship track. Okay. And as you can see, um, it moved up from poor to fair. So I'm going to get it into good because then notice there's no more negative modifier. And I can travel to Africa if Syracuse is controlled. Well, Syracuse is still with the Carthaginians. So, but I'm going to spend his admiral ability to do that. So now I won't have a negative modifier when I get into naval combat, which I'm sure will be coming here before too long. And again, if nothing else, I'll try and force it just so you can see how it works. Okay. All right, so now we're up to the strategy card phase, okay? Now, the strategy card phase, you get a certain amount of cards based on what's on the turn record track. This is seven for each side. And what I always do is I just roll a die to determine who gets the first card. And the Romans will get the first card. All right, so here we go. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven. Now, in a two-player game, if the Carthaginian player has a major or minor campaign, I think it's both, it's definitely major, he can basically claim first movement on the turn. Otherwise, the Roman player decides, okay? And, of course, playing solo so you don't know what's coming, um, I just go ahead and play the Romans first. Now, of course, I have a couple different ways I play this. I can play actively as one side, and then I have the two-card method or three-card method, depending on which way I want to approach things, for the non-active side, which this game on the active side, I'm being the Romans. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or, of course, I can do the two- or three-card method for both sides, which is something I've done before, and if you want to see that in action, you can see my um, Victory and Glory Napoleon um, video to see how I, how I do that. Um, there's not a whole lot of cards here, so I really don't use Stuka Joe's CDG method. Um, you can do that too if, if that strikes your fancy. Okay, so here we go. So the Romans get to play first. Now, a little bit different here is that, keep in mind, when you play it, this is a little different from other CDGs, um, when you play the card for the ops point, which of course is the number that is in the upper left-hand corner there, the two, um, you can split the points in this game, okay? You can split them between doing a couple of things. You can put down political control markers, okay? You can refit ships, all right? Um, you can do things um, in the Miad. You can put control markers there, okay? You can put down supply trains. Now, supply trains are used here um, to basically help with sieges and stuff in the spaces that you're in. It was necessary at that time. You can do shipbuilding, but that requires a three-op card. And, of course, you can do training to improve the Roman seamanship, but, again, that requires a three-op card. So, let's see. Just taking a look at the cards I have here and trying to figure out where I want to start. Um... Because I cannot lay siege to Syracuse as the Romans. In order to lay siege to Syracuse, Rome, or Carthage, you must have naval supremacy. Naval supremacy in this game is designated by the trident here. And as you can see, it's on the blue side at the beginning, which makes sense because Carthage was definitely the better naval um, empire at the time. All right. So I'm trying to decide, should I go ahead and move down and go into Masana and reinforce my console that I have there or should I go ahead and move my guy from Rome? 
Hmm, good question. Or should I just get moving and start marching towards Lilybaum and try to force the battle? But I don't think I can do that quite yet because I think the enemy force there is a little big. Okay, so I think what I'll do is... Um, <clears throat> I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring down those reinforcements. So I'll play this card, the surprise sortie. And as you can see with the cards here, you've got the number. If either side can use it, notice it is both colors, red and blue. If it's a Carthage only, it's blue. Roman only, it's red. And then, of course, you can use it for the event. But I'm going to use it to activate my one console because, again, he has an activation value of 1, so that makes it kind of easy. By the way, I'm just going to show you this here. Let me move you over here for a second um, by my decks. Um, at the end of the turn, and this is different for this game too, at the end of the turn, you're going to total up the value of all the cards that are played by both sides, and then there's a resolution on that, giving one side the chance to place some more markers, do some more refitting and stuff. So what I do as a solo play is I have two piles here designated by two um, blocks that have the colors. So I keep them straight, who played what cards, and I can total them up at the end of the turn. To do that, it's called the war chest phase um, in the game. Okay, so I'm going to activate here. And I'm going to go ahead and move down so that I can get ready to cross the Straits of Messina there um, in this game. Okay. And naval and land unit can be freely combined, but only three movement points can be used um, for naval movement. Okay. Now, in this game, too, I should point out real quick when it comes to naval movement, I'll zoom in here so you can see the blue lines pretty clearly. In this game, the blue lines show you where you can do naval movement. Some of them have the lightning bolts there. That's for storms, so that if your opponent plays a storm card on you, or as the Romans, if you have poor seamanship, or you have the Corvass, um, the storms can affect you uh, adversely. Uh, so, and again, some of them have those markings, some of them don't, uh, depending on the space. But that's how you move. So you can only move from one blue space to another. So technically over here, if I wanted to, I could take my console, and I couldn't move them directly to Syracuse. You can move directly into an enemy-occupied space. That is permissible. And then I could go from there. But I could also go and head straight into Masana with all the troops that I have at my disposal. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to combine those two together. And I can only get three points to do it with. So one, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up these combat units while I'm at it too, and get them out of Regium. Now, at this point here, the Carthaginians could try to intercept. Now, intercepting naval-wise here, there's a couple of ways to do it. Okay, um, If it's going to a space where there is an opposing general, then you can try an interception attempt. If you could go to a space where an opposing general is located within range, in other words, one movement line, you could intercept as well, too. So, for example, if there was a Carthaginian general here, which, of course, I might have wanted to do that. Maybe I should have done that with my other Carthaginian general. Then, since he's moving here, and it's connected to the straight, the space at Masana, I could have attempted to intercept there. Okay, But I didn't actually do that. But you know what? <clears throat> Let's do it. I know it's a little backtracking, and normally in a game I would not allow myself to do that. But, since it will get the chance to show you the interception and show you a naval battle, let's do it. Okay. So, now, for interception attempts, okay, you basically, again, have to have a line connected to the space to where you're headed to, okay, and we do have that here, and you need to have an admiral, okay. Um, or I should say that it helps to have an admiral, um, it's not absolutely necessary. So let me backtrack on that. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Having a general you need, having an admiral does help, especially when you get into naval combat itself. Okay. So, let's try to exceed. No, I'm good. I did not exceed the 10 combat units limit for naval movement. I was just making sure of that. Okay. All right. So. 
I have to roll less than or equal to the general's battle rating on the classic die. Now, classic die because there's other dice that's used for other things. So, old Hamilcar here has a rating of three. So I need to roll three or less to get the interception attempt to be successful. And lo and behold, it is a two. So it is successful. Okay. Now, oh, one thing I forgot to do, I'll just do again, and a little bit of backtracking here. And again, when you play solo, sometimes you forget things. But as the side that's moving naval-wise, you can assign any one of your warships, or no warships, to escort your combat forces. Now, since I put Hamilcar there, which of course means there was a better chance of that, I did go ahead and send my escort with them there. Now, you could also do interception if it failed. If you have naval supremacy, you could give up naval supremacy and do the interception as well, too. Okay, um, And you have to have control of the port that's being moved to. Okay, So... Or you have to have naval supremacy. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do the naval bit then. Let's do the naval battle. All right. So we're going to have a naval battle right here in the Straits of Masana. But, of course, to fight the battle, we're going to come down here onto this part of the table. And then we come back out a little bit here to give us a little more room to do so okay all right and Carthage is going to intercept with all three of their ships they have ready of course hoping that their situation will be a good one I'm just making sure I don't have anything I can use here um, Hmm, I could do that, but I'm not going to. Okay, so actually, you know what? Let's move over here where the warships are. I think that'll be a better idea, and we'll just place the cards down as we go. Okay. So. All right. So now there are naval tactic cards here, kind of like the battle cards for land battles. Okay. So each player gets a tactic card if they have naval supremacy. That's the Carthaginians. Okay, number of tactic cards equal to the battle rating of the general that's commanding the fleet. So the Carthaginians will get three more, and the Romans only get one. Yikes, this could be bad. This could be really, really, really bad. Um, so you know what? I'm going to play this card. I was debating this, which will let me draw two tactics in a naval battle. It is a three level card so it's kind of hard to part with it. I feel sad but I feel like I need it if I'm going to keep up with the Carthaginians. Okay. Alright. So we've drawn our tactic cards. Okay. So now this goes back and forth. Okay. The battle player with naval supremacy. The Carthaginians will go first. So the first thing you do is you're going to play a tactic card. Now the Carthaginians have four available. So I will determine which two I'm going to flip up and then choose from that. Okay, so cards three and four. All right, so the two cards I have to choose from here. Um, ooh, I think I will definitely, definitely use outflank. Okay, so I will play outflank for the Carthaginians. Okay, basically, it's going to let me do two battle rolls as the Carthaginians this turn. Yikes. All right. So, now we will engage. We will make a battle. Okay? So, to basically try and win this thing, um, I could go after the transports, or I could go after uh, the Roman battle fleet. I'm going to go ahead... And I'm going to go after the Roman battle fleet to start here, since I get two extra rolls. Let me see if I can whittle those guys down big time. Okay? All right. <clears throat> and to do this, you go to the attrition table here. But it's a little different than land battles, because as you can see here, these Roman numerals are across the bottom. These are the battle rounds that you can have in a naval battle. So we're going to start here at round number one. And then we will go from 
it's there. All right, so the Carthaginians are going to roll two dice. Let's see how they make out. They rolled two dice. Um, okay. And then they're going to basically, you know, figure out exactly how many ships you hit. So they rolled a six and a three. So they managed to sink one Roman ship. So one Roman ship is knocked out of the battle for the Carthaginians so far. So that outflank maneuver worked quite well for them. Now, the third step in naval battles is to regroup. So that means you either can draw a new tactic card or you can attempt to retreat. Well, the Carthaginians are not interested in retreat here. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to try and draw a new card. Okay, so now this is where the Admiral comes in. Now, Carthage has the upper hand on this because Hamilcar does have a... Um, a um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. He has a Admiral designation there. Okay, so if I roll three or less, they're going to get a new battle tactic card. And I did, okay? And technically, I was just looking at this. Hamilcar actually only should have had two tactic cards, but since I kept two secret, that's no harm, no foul, so I'll just pretend I drew the second one with this regrouping here, okay? So, Carthage, landing first blood. All right. Romans, let's see what I got for tactics. Well, that one's kind of helpful. Uh, they don't have any transports. That's kind of wasteful to me. Uh, man, I can't play that either. Dang it. All right, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and do this. So I'll play this card for the Romans. So I get to inflict a number of hits equal to my general's battle rating, which unfortunately is only one. So I knock the Carthaginian ship out, but at least that's one less mouth to feed. So basically now I need a five or a six to get one of those other Carthaginian ships. Because the Carthage has no transports, I will target the warships. And I rolled a three, so that's unfortunate. Okay? All right, so on to round two. Okay? And we just start again. Carthaginians will choose one of their cards to play here. Um, let's see. Hmm. So could try that. That would be helpful. One here will let me roll a die, and then whatever comes up, that will cause those Roman warships actually to go back. Um, so I think that's what I'll do. I will roll on the round column to see the number of opposing warships that become spent and move back home to the port box, which is down here. This is the port. This is the at sea box. All right. So let's see if it works. For the Carthaginians. They rolled a one, so no luck there. Okay? Alright, so now they'll roll. They're gonna engage. Again, they're going after the Roman warships first. They rolled a five, which again on round two here. A five. So that is again one more Roman ship that's been nailed. So that's not good for Rome. I really need a big victory this time. Let's see what I have for a tactic card still. See, I don't have anything good. Um, ah, because Pursuit's no good to me because they're not running and they have no transports. Ah, and Boarding... Um, well, actually, Boarding could help me here. It says, make a battle roll in attrition table column corresponding to the number of CUs carried by your fleet. And I've got like eight. You may convert any hit enemy ships warships into prizes. Woohoo! Which means I basically capture them. Ooh, that would be big. I will play that card. Now, let me just verify how many combat units I have here. So, let me reach around this side so you're not seeing my big old arm. So, three, five, um, five. Okay, so I'm rolling on the five column. All right, here we go. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. Baby needs a brand new pair of shoes. Ah, oh, baby's going barefoot. Well, not entirely, actually, because I did manage to capture one of the ships. I did hit the 5-6 column, so that does get me one of the ships as a prize. 
All right, now, if I can roll a good battle roll here uh, on the second round, which again, I need a five, four, five, or six, I can end this thing. Come on, baby. And it is a six. Yes! So, sorry, I didn't mean to sound like Tom Hanks in Castaway. Yes! Look what I have done! I have created fire! But I won the battle. That's maybe perhaps the more important thing here. Okay, so victory is mine. So now the Carthaginians will have no choice but to retreat because they got nothing left. To quote De Niro from Goodfellas, you got nothing. So. All right, so actually that naval battle went better than I thought it would. Now, my Roman ships here will end up going back to port. They're tired, they're whipped. Woo. Okay. Now, if the enemy had not intercepted me out there, my warships would have returned to port A-OK. -okay. They would have been fine, okay? But as such, because you used them, because they were engaged in combat, then they're fine. Um, i got to check here prizes. Here we go. Um, okay, it is spent. Okay, it is spent. It's a Roman warship that's spent. All right, I was pretty sure. I didn't think it would be. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, nobody had a die roll with the with the supremacy with the supremacy symbol, so no worries about that. All right. So the battle's over. So let's go ahead and finish up there. Okay. When the battle's over. Okay. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Player retreats. Oh, no, I was wrong. The victorious warships remain ready, so my two warships are still ready. Sorry, I misspoke. Um, okay, nobody escaped. Ah, and now... Roma! Roma Victoria! So now I have naval supremacy. Hello, Syracuse. <laughs> I might wait on Syracuse, though, because there is a card in the deck that allows um, Syracuse to become an ally of Rome, and let me tell you, that's a lot less messier. Okay, so let's return to our theater here of action here. So I managed to successfully execute the movement, and now these consuls are together with a very, well, I'll probably gonna have to split these into two armies. They can't carry all these together into battle, so. So I'm going to give the one guy here one more strength point. And I'm going to have him start heading for Lily Bomb here. And then I'll have the smaller guy, the small guy, he can go ahead since he has the one. I'm going to have him basically range out and convert these markers so that we can get into there. Okay. So um, you got to see what how the naval battle worked there. Okay. All right, on to Carthage now. Carthage's turn. All right, so I'm flipping two cards here for Carthage. Strength of three and a strength of one. Hmm. Woo! Woo, so Ro or Carthage could do emergency shipbuilding, but I have to take off markers. Um, I have to take markers off the board. So. Okay. Oh, speaking of taking markers off the board... Sorry, I'm, I know I'm not at the top of my game today. I apologize. Um, half the warships lost in battle. So they lost two warships in the battle. So they have to remove one PC marker. Now, when it comes to the Carthaginians, anytime that happens, the first PC marker has to come from the Carthaginian Council of 104. That's, um, you know, critical for them. Because basically the council is supposed to represent the warlike nature of the Carthaginians. Or... I shouldn't say the warlike nature. Let me rephrase that. Basically, their martial spirit. There we go. Because um, as I read years ago, and I forget who wrote the book because I read this when I was in high school, but at the end of the book about the Second um, Punic War, basically they said that the greatest failing of Carthage was they were a commercial empire that didn't know how to use, properly use, I should say, uh, Hannibal's military skills. Yeah, maybe. But then again, if you kind of envision 
Hannibal was a Roman general. Yeah, it's a little scary to think about. Okay, so, so I could do that. Or I could go ahead and do something else here. Well, I know the Romans are coming. There's no question about that. So I could send Carthaginian reinforcements across the sea. Or I could place, because this three card also has, as you can see, there's a warship symbol and an infantry symbol. So I could go ahead and place a combat unit. But now the question is, I think that has to go into Carthage, as I recall correctly. There is a lot of rules and stuff to this. And again, you know, the more you play it, the more you get it down and everything. No, I can place it with any one general who's in a friendly controlled space. Okay, so now let's see. Since I know the battle's coming, you know what? That's what I'm going to do with this Carthaginian card. I'm going to give Adder, Adderball. Yeah. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. If not, by all means, you know, those of you who may be more experts on this time period than I am, feel free to chime in in the comments. But I'm going to go ahead and reinforce him with another combat unit because war is coming, so to speak. Um, not to sound all Game of Thrones-ish there. All right. Now, unfortunately, as Rome, I'm short-handed now by one card because I did play that card, but it did, did work out really well for me um, in the end. I was able to get that extra tactic card. Now, I don't, you know, those two extra tactic cards, which definitely helped me. Okay. Let's see here now. Well, let's continue with my plan. So, I'm going to have the one console. I'm going to play this one op value card. And I'm going to have him take his army and march off up to here to Panormus. Um, Panoramus, I'm not sure. Again, I'm no expert on this. That was one thing I always said as a social studies teacher. If I wanted to make a bunch of money, what I should do is find out the proper pronunciation to like all these different words that are used often in, in social studies, like place names, you know, like even in Greece or even like Thucydides, you know, names, and just publish a reference book. How to say the names using like phonetic pronunciation. I bet I can make a lot of money that way. Oh well. Anyway, so he's up there, he's ready to convert that PC. Alright. Uh, well, this is a new Carthaginian card. Romans won't be getting the Corvus anytime soon. Ooh, Carthage's problem, though, is that they don't have any generals with an activation rating of 1. Um, so, you know what I'll do with this is, then I'll go ahead and replace that missing control marker. Because remember, with the ops value, you can place a number of political control markers equal to the op value. So I'll put that back on the council of 104 to strengthen that. Because remember, once it's all filled, that gives Carthage an extra victory point. All right, now. Oh, I'd like to save that though. Oh shoot, I should have played that first. That was dumb. I should have played this before I got the marching because I had that console there. I could have placed two more combat units. Stupid, 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 to quote Chris Farley. All right. <sighs> to quote the dude, this is a bummer, man. But all right, here's what I'm going to do. <sighs> this pains me. Ah, no! I'm going to flip the control marker here. And then I'm going to add another Roman one up here to Eturia so I can get an extra combat unit. Well, I'll need another marker. Okay, Carthage. Oh, whoo. Well, that's a nice card for them. Look at this. Look at this one. Sicilian recruits. Ha! Two C's with any friendly general located in Sicilia. Well, guess where they're going? I'll give you one hint. His name starts with an A. <laughs> so, he's going to be ready for battle, man. It could be like that old Duke Nukem game from the 90s. Come get some. Yeah, he's got a nice sized army now. Mm. All right. Now, questions. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Should I march and force the fight so that I can lay siege? I do have supply trains so I can keep my dudes supplied. 
Ah, let's see. He does have a good battle rating. So let me see here what I'm going to do. Um, hmm. That's a good question. Because I really, I never even got my troops here from Rome, sent south. But then again, I have to admit, I've been kind of thinking about sending these guys this way towards Sardinia and Corsica. Okay. Let's force a battle so you can see what a battle looks like using my method for the, the battle card. So I'm going to play this card to activate my general in Masana. One, two, three. Boom, baby. All right. It's time to fight. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know any, like, you know, I can't really do, like, you know, like, if it was France attacking, I could be like, dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. So we'll start with the Romans. And then, um, you know what, I'll try and lay things in this space here. Make it easier to, to take a look at and see. So let me just move my camera around a tiny bit. All right, so first of all, battle cards. Here we go. So one battle card for each combat unit present in the land battle. Okay, so let's see. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten for the Romans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten cards for their combat units. Then, there's no interception. Um, nope, nothing to worry about with that. I don't have allies. I don't think, well, do I have allies? No. Nobody, I have three. Actually, no, but they will. You have allies if you have control of province. Rome does not have control of Sicily. I've got three spaces under control. Excuse me, the Carthaginians have five, so they have the majority. So they will get, or I have four, but they still have five, so they will get that ally thing there. Um, the battle rating of my commanding general, which is three, so one, two, three. Uh-oh, might be unlucky. Thirteen cards. The Romans were extremely superstitious. I mean, most people in the ancient world were, but the Romans were really superstitious. Um, I mean, they were so superstitious that if you tripped, like leaving your house, crossing the threshold, they would go back inside. They wouldn't go out that day. That's how superstitious they were. Okay. All right. So that's it. So that's the number of cards I get there for the Romans. 13. Oh, oh, oh. somewhere there's a bunch of Romans probably shaking their head going, no, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Reminds me of, uh, what's his name with the sacred chickens? Pulcher, I think was his name. You know, the sacred chickens, um, the naval battle for the omen and stuff they wouldn't eat. And then he grabbed the sacred chickens and said, well, if you won't eat, Go ahead and drink. So he threw them into the water and they all drowned. He got his butt kicked in the battle. So as I used to tell my students, I guess the chickens knew their man, right? All right, let's see what Adderhall has here. Well, he has a battle rating of 3-2. So I'll give him three cards. He has two, three, five, seven, eight. He has eight. One, two, three, four, five, eight. He's got eight cards. All right, okay. Um, I'm going to move him. We all know he's in Roma, so no big deal. Okay. Again, that was just making it easier for y'all to y'all to see. All right. So now, this goes back and forth. And, of course, in a two-player game, you know, there's kind of like, think, oh, oh, I almost forgot. Sorry. They get one more card for allies, okay? Because they do control Sicily. They have the majority of control of Sicily here. Okay. There's no elephants involved, so we don't have to worry about elephants. Elephants are a special, separate step here, but all the elephants are still in Africa with um, Carthalo. He's still hanging out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the side that launched the battle, they get to play the first card. So generally speaking, you know, if you're playing this as a two-player game, you're going to look through all your cards. And basically, this is a matching thing. So you want to go ahead and match and try to come up with stuff that... Ooh, I got two reserve cards. That's nice. Reserve cards can be used to match anything. So like, for example, if I play this probe card, then Carthage has to match. If they match, then they can try to seize the initiative, and then they get to play the first card. And back and forth and back and forth until somebody cannot match. 
Okay, and whatever that last card is, that tells you what's going to happen with the extra casualties. Because, of course, battles in the ancient world, most of the casualties actually took place once one army broke. You know, there weren't a whole lot of, of there wasn't a whole lot of slaughter and death and destruction until one side started to run for their lives. Um, that's the big thing. That's why um, when they talk about, um, no, Catiline. Um, and that whole thing there, what went on with the Catalan conspiracy and, and, and the battle and stuff that went on, um, you know, they make a point to say that none of them were stabbed in the back, which means they did not run, you know, which, again, you know, was a big deal. So, so I'm looking at my cards here, and then, and then, and then, I got two double envelopments, too. Well, I got three double envelopments. Should I just try to win this thing right off the bat? <sighs> well, let's try it. I'll play double envelopment. Okay, so now in the Carthage deck, I have to find one that matches. So let's see. Actually, you know what? I won't play that right off the bat. So that way I can show you how, how this works. Let's try, let's try Frontal Assault. Let's go with Frontal Assault instead. So now I have to find a matching card in the Carthaginian deck. Now what I do for my solo method is I just reveal one at a time until I find a match. Oh, there's a match. Okay, and then I'll put this probe at the bottom because I know it's there. Now, Carthage could try to seize the initiative. In order to do that, you have to roll your battle rating or less, which is a three, and then they get to play the first card. And it's a five, so they don't get to play their first card. All right, so let me go ahead and let me try, I really do want to play double envelopment because <laughs> it's, it's nasty. It's just, it's nasty is the way to put it. So you know what, I am going to play it because I do want to try and make this a huge battle so I can lay siege to there. So let's see if they either have a double envelopment or they need to have a reserve. Right flank, left flank, ah! They do have a reserve card. Now a reserve card can be used to match anything. Okay, and notice I put the two cards that I drew right and left flank on the bottom so that way I don't know what's coming next. Okay, I have no idea, all right? So they matched, they can try to seize the initiative again. Which is important because when the seizing the initiative part comes, um, you know, you don't want to know what the next card, like, I wouldn't want to know, oh, it's going to be left flank. You know, I don't know what's coming. So they didn't seize the initiative, so it's up to me again. All right. I want this battle badly. So I'm going to play double envelopment again. Let's see if they have a double envelopment or if they have another reserve card. Let's see. Frontal assault. Probe. Left flank. Right flank. Left flank, frontal assault, uh-oh, left flank, I'm running out of cards, probe, right flank, left flank, yay! Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I shouldn't use that because Rocky actually loses at the end of that movie. Okay, so I guess 13 turned out to be a lucky number here, so I'm victorious. Now, once the battle is over, once one side cannot match the cards anymore, okay, then you figure out casualties. Okay. So I play three cards. So I will use the three column on the attrition table to find out how many have lost by both sides. So both sides lost one combat unit. Which, I mean, that's not bad and that's not unheard of either. You know, again, because the losses really weren't when you're pounding away each, uh, on each other in line. They actually happened later. Okay. Now, here's where the double envelopment card comes in handy. Whoops, sorry. I was so excited. All right, so if you look here, I'm going to roll the retreat die. Remove number of losses equal to the number of swords and dots. Remove them all if I get a cavalry symbol. Okay, now, there are two retreat dies. Little die. If the side had four combat units or less in the battle. Okay, the smaller. All right. Uh, if the loser's army began with four or less, which they didn't, the big die is if they had more than four, and they did. So here we go. I'm going to roll this bad boy. Let's see what we get. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Give me the cavalry. Give me the cavalry. I want a Kanai type battle victory. Oh. Bummer, man. Okay, I got three circles and a sword. So that means the Carthage will lose four combat units, which is a healthy hammering, because you can see, as I'm sure, how hard it is to get troops, and then they'll retreat. 
Now they could retreat across the water, which actually might not be a bad idea, or they could retreat to Aggregentum, and they still could go across the water. Um, hmm. You know what, I'm going to retreat to Aggregentum just to kind of annoy the Romans. Let's kind of sit on their flank, make them think. So, that's how my solo method works. Um, and I think it works pretty well, because one time the Carthaginians did have a double envelopment card, and they went first, and I didn't have one, and they rolled the knight. Holy smoke, I lost my whole force of ten Roman combat units. Ah! Which I'm sure is pretty much the reaction. Oh, God, I forgot to play this. I was going to increase my general battle rating by one. Ah, see, it would have been 14. That's probably why I got lucky. All right. Now, we need the consequences of losing the battle, okay? Um, so they lost five, rounded down. Would be two, so now they have to... Um, Yeah, they'll have to go ahead and remove two political control markers. And again, they have to come from the Carthaginian Council of 100 and 4 first. Okay, so huge victory for Rome. All right, that was good. Now I can lay siege. Well, I can't actually because all I have is a one card left for activation. All right, let's get the Carthaginians done here because I know this is starting to run a little bit long. On things, and I would like to show you the war chest part. Um, we'll see if I can pull that off because I don't like to make my videos too long. But again, this is this is um, an involved game. I mean, you know, it's it's fun though, and, and and you always have to remember when I do these videos for you guys too is that you know um, they obviously take longer than it takes to play the game because I'm also explaining to you how things go um, with that, okay? So, let's see what to do with my Carthaginians. Well, Syracuse is still allied, so actually I could take Adderhall and march him down and lay siege to Masana after I convert this political control marker down here. So I could do that, that's true. That's an idea. Huh. Um, hmm. Try to cut lines of communication, huh? Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to delay that for a second. I'm going to go ahead and put the political control marker back because I like having the extra reinforcements, especially. Extra generals I can kind of give and take with. All right, all i got left now for Rome is a 1, which really doesn't help me much, but I will put it here in Eturia, and that should give me another infantry unit for next turn. So, okay. Well, that's at least something. All right, so let's finish off. Now, Carthage, because they have all these cards to play, um, ooh, well, they got treachery within his city. Treachery, treachery, treachery. Ooh. Huh. That's an interesting thought. You know what? I think I will do that. I will go ahead. I'm going to have him pick up this guy from Aggregentum too with him. Because he need at least three strength points to lay siege. So I'll march him one, two down to here. And then next time, I'll play this card to convert this. And then I will use this as an ops card to march to Masana. And I can roll the siege dice twice. Now, there are two different siege dices. You use the white if you don't have naval supremacy, you use the red if you do. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's do that because at the end of a movement I can do this. I can lay siege here. So let's see what we got. I got one dot two dots. I don't think the dots are good though. I'm trying to remember. But let me see. 
Yeah, besieging army loses <laughs> one combat unit. So, unfortunately, they just lost two combat units, which means now they can't continue the siege. You need at least three strength points. Ouch! So that kind of backfired the treachery. So I guess they got double-crossed, right? That's how I would read that. Okay. Let me move quickly through the last couple of phases of the turn. Um, winter attrition, basically, you have to roll for attrition if you're on enemy space, unless you have a supply train. Now, that's going to apply to both Lilybaum, Lilybaum, and Masana, okay? But both of those leaders can expend a supply train, okay? Which looks like this, which is unique to the Hamilcar game. So, he'll expend one, and my powerful Roman general here will expend one too. So everybody's cool, but you also have to roll for your ready warships to see if any of them get unready. Well, Carthage only has one that's unready. Rome, yikes, rolled a six. So one of theirs will flip from ready to unready. All right, that's that. What are you going to do? Okay. Victory checked in war chest. Now, victory check, of course, we don't really have to do um, because the only automatic victory is capture Carthage, capture Rome. And it's not the last turn. It's only turn two. Okay. Now, the war chest segment. I was telling you about this before. So we're going to take the Carthage cards and add up the value. So two, five, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, fifteen, yikes, seventeen. So they have a value of seventeen. She's only... Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Some of you probably have no idea who Winger is. All right, Roman ones are four, five, five and three is eight, 10, 11. Yikes, that's a difference of six. Okay, now I could remove supply trains for the Carthaginians to make up the difference on the six. Otherwise, the other side for the war chest segment gets to spend the difference of ops, which is six for any one of these things here. So again, notice three ops. I could build a ship. I could recruit um, in the player's capital. Um, I can refit ships. There's a lot I can do here, and I've got six of these to work with. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend... Well, hold on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do two here. I'm going to do three for another combat unit in Rome and then I'm going to use the last point to place a supply train with my console that is laying siege to Lily Bob. Okay. Alright. So Actually, you know what? I've got to check political isolation. Usually you don't have to worry too much about that, but let me double check political isolation because um, friendly combat unit. Okay, well, they can trace to a friendly combat unit, so never mind. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. I was, I was worried that Masana was going to be completely cut off, but it's not. Or the Romans would be there, but they have combat units. So no worries there. Okay, so war chest segment is over, and now we're ready to go back to the start of the turn. Okay, all right. Now I know that was a little lengthy, but again, this is a you know it's an involved game, but it's a lot of fun though too. Um, I had played this game two player many 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 moons ago, uh, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I do love the first Punic War here with it, um, and I hope this kind of shows you all the different possibilities and stuff. Um, as far as, you know, I tried to show you everything. I didn't show you everything, like I didn't show you land interception and stuff. But I tried to show you everything else, um, so that you can get a good feel for how the game plays. So, this will be interesting to see how this plays out now. Very interesting indeed. Alright, next time around, um, and I'm sure you probably noticed it's been almost three weeks since the last video. I've been... Busier than one arm man hanging wallpaper, but I will try to come to you and visit with you guys as often as I can. But um, things are a little busy. Uh, I'm not sure where I will go next time, to be honest, because now I'm awaiting. Um, I'm buying in the process of buying a bundle of um, John Prado's Third Reich games because um, I'm looking for 
that East, that European theater game that has the best blend of playability and diplomacy and sandbox element um, to it. Because I do like the dice of decision with Totler Krieg, but uh, the system, I mean, it just takes a while to play solo. So I'm looking for something a little crisper and cleaner. I love the diplomacy cards in Triumph and Tragedy, but I'm not crazy about the block system for combat and stuff. So um, so we'll see if maybe this Third Reich will work out. I played, I had a third edition of the, of the old Avalon Hill Third Reich, and I played that to death back in the day. Um, so... So, maybe I'll come to you from one of those. I also um, picked up cheaply um, Morse Code and Cold Days in Hell. So, um, I'm going to look at those too. I partly bought those because they have different scenarios. For example, the Cold Days in Hell, which is basically the Eastern Front um, module where you can combine the maps together to make a grand European theater game. Um, that has like a 1941 Balkans campaign um, option. And the other thing that intrigued me about it was it has a, uh, the combat system is like the old Avalon Hill game Russian Front where the combat takes place in the hex. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how that translates to a strategic um, situation. So I'm very familiar with that because one of the first 10 war games I ever bought was Russian Front. So which it totally, that just blew my mind and took it to a whole new level. So, all right. So this is Tim Korchnoy from... Bare Bones Wargaming saying All Glory is Fleeting <laughs> as it says with the Romans and um, as always thanks for watching um, and more than likely it'll be European theater not ancient history um, next time when I um, when I visit with you guys again so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time